In this video, we're going to show you the new web launcher interface, providing a streamlined method by which you can then launch a remote viral server on the packet.net bare metal service platform. So we're going to start off by logging into the user workspace management interface as usual. You can log in either as guest or UWM admin. Now under the viral server tab, we have a new option, which is remote server. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. But first of all, we need to check our sort configuration and status. So here I want to check that I'm in contact with my viral sort master. So here I've got green lights, so everything is looking good. Otherwise, I may have to go and reset my keys. So now I've clicked on the remote server tab and we have a new panel with options that have come up here. The most important piece is we need to have our packet API key. We we'll need to fill in our values there. And we can select the data center from the drop down list as well as the machine type that I wish to run. Below we see the dead man's timer, so that's a value in hours after which the server will be brought down. We also have a set of passwords. Now we can press the generate password button or we can enter our own set of passwords in here and then save that as a profile by hitting the save button. So once that's complete, we can press the OK button, that's now saved, and I'm now in a position to launch. So I can review my settings and then press the launch button. This then starts up a series of scripts. We can see the progress here. And then we'll see that's running. So when that is running, that's now talking to the packet uh, API interface and starting up the server instance on the data center that I've selected. And then we'll see log progress as that spin up goes through. Here I've actually logged into the packet.net interface and I can see the new server that I've started up is in provisioning state. So we can just go back and here we see that the job is running and that'll stay in this state until that's completed. So my spin up's completed and now I can press OK and we return to this main panel. And now we can click on the status tab and here we'll see the completed information. So we've got our spin up completion information. We've got the IP addresses and passwords that have been set and more detail coming back from packet.net about that spin up. So we scroll back up to the top of the output and in particular, you know, there is our usernames and passwords that have been applied. And right down at the bottom of the page is our OpenVPN client file. So we're going to download that and we're going to connect to our remote server now. So just a reminder that that output there at the end of that first panel is essential because that has our usernames and passwords and the IP address, obviously, of our remote server. So I'm now going to take that downloaded client OpenVPN information and use that in conjunction with my OpenVPN client. Now I'm using TunnelBlick. So I've selected the profile and I'm updating any old information I had, getting rid of that and replacing it with the new content, which I've just downloaded. So that's in place, get rid of that. And now we can start up our connection. And here we can see the tunnel being opened up to my remote viral server. And we have connection. So I'm just reminding myself of my passwords from the status window. And then I'm going to open up a new tab and point it to 172.16.11.254, which is the tunnel IP address of my remote viral server, and logging in using that password, which I saw previously. And there we are. We're connected. We can see the status. And it's just as if we were using our local viral server. We can see the set of images, and this server is now ready to launch, ready to use. Just bear in mind the dead timer, which will then terminate your server instance. So if we're finished with everything, we can then press the terminate button. And terminate will send the messages to the packet interface, the packet API interface, to bring down my remote viral server. Again, we'll see schedule jobs running. This will take a few minutes to run through and then we will get that confirmation message as the server is brought down.
I can then also go to the packet.net interface and just check whether there are any servers in operation and here we can see they're all terminated.